Hey everybody, Tom here. Well, it's that time of week again where we cover the latest stock market news for the week ahead. We'll be looking at the economic calendar, earnings reports that you should be looking at, and our technical analysis thoughts on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ using our top-down price action methods. Stay tuned. So it should come as no surprise that one of the key news events that stock traders will be looking at this week is of course between the White House and the Democrats and their current impasse over the bill. Basically they have not come up with a short or long term agreement and they're currently really debating which one they should go with. I don't think it's a question of whether they do get some kind of agreement but it's what it will be. Now every day this goes on means that Americans will no longer be receiving their 600 per week in federal unemployment benefits. And this will have an effect on the stock markets and of course a massive effect on people no longer receiving those benefits. So this will be a story that you should be looking at. Whatever they come up with as an agreement will have a definite effect on the S&P 500 and of course NASDAQ as realistically if you have less money being pumped into the economy, there's less money of course being spent. So it's a story that you're going to be looking at and every single day they don't come to agreement, expect more volatility in the markets and more downside pressure from that event. When it comes to economic reports and of course Fed speakers, we have PMI, ISMs, motor vehicle sales, all of these types of things. But it's the back of the week that we should be looking at. Of course, we have the continued jobless claims and we have the first week of the month non-farm payrolls. So I'll actually be doing a live stream for the non-farm payrolls this week. If that's something that interests you, remember to subscribe and hit that alert bell. And we'll be covering some of the key, I guess, stock market moves in terms of indices and some of the currency moves during that time. It's really interesting to see how the markets react to non-farm payrolls. And it's one of those events that happens every month and always works out to be some fireworks in terms of the smaller timeframes. Another thing you should be looking at is, of course, earnings calendar. We're still in earnings season. And while we've seen the biggest companies really report, being those big five fang stocks and show a sentiment where they beat general pretty low expectations. We still have some earnings and some opportunities this week. On the notables, I guess we got Walt Disney on Tuesday after close. I'll be looking at Activision Blizzard, it's a company I always look at. Beyond Meat will be interesting as well. Square, I know a lot of people on this channel trade Square. Moderna, and then of course we've got Uber as well on Thursday. I think that'll be an interesting one just from a perspective of how they're doing with their cash flow and their earnings over the last quarter. So there's a little bit of earnings this week. It's not the blockbuster that we saw last week, but plenty of opportunity for traders looking for breakouts and just traders looking at these particular shares. So let's get into it. Let's talk about our top-down approach starting at the monthly as July is over and we're now in August. As always, we'll be using the SPX, so we'll be using the real market, not the futures, and we'll be using the monthly at the beginning and tradingview.com. So the first thing I note straight away is that we have a close higher than the 32.30 from last week. And why is this important? Well, it's the first time we've ever seen a monthly close at this high. So we saw weeks before, but we've never seen a close. So there's a lot of bullish momentum from the technical perspective here on the chart. So we've seen a really, really strong close coming off those earnings from the big tech companies and they're what's pushing the market right now. So the monthly, anything else to note? Well, of course, we've got that 3400 resistance up here that we reached before the crisis and that's something that I'd always have on my chart and I'd always have an alert if the market ever got to a period above this. So that's pretty much what I'd say about the monthly for now. I'd also just note that this 3000, you can see how it's such strong support because the previous resistances acted as support and on the smaller timeframes as we jump down, you'll see that become more apparent. So what have we got on the weekly? Well, we still have, of course, a 2050 cross of the exponential moving averages. And I think if we drive in here, it becomes more interesting when we look at the weekly close. So the weekly close was bullish. It's clearly busted above that 3230 we've been discussing on this channel. And look at how close it is to this week high, this 32 kind of 80 zone. I'd be setting an alert here for this week. And why would I be looking at that? Well, I think it comes down to the candle formation from the week before. So we obviously saw a bullish hammer coming in. And then we saw what many people would call a shooting star or some people may call them a pin bar. Now, what that signifies is usually a rejection of the market. If you ever see a market therefore break above that rejection, as in it gets above that wick, 
What's that signaling? Well, first thing is it's going to be signaling a lot of stop loss runs as in retail traders will have their stop losses only a few pips above this zone. So it gets above this zone, it will trigger a huge amount of stop losses and unfortunately the nature of kind of retail traders is that they'll continue moving their stop losses back or they'll continue shorting against the market. So the event of actually when it gets past this zone usually triggers a decent amount of buying and it's usually quite a bullish signal. So if the market gets above here, it really is signaling that further bullish momentum that we've been talking about up to 3400 or up to the previous high. Why are there other reasons that this could happen? Well, we talked about how the body closes below here a few weeks ago between the 3200 and the 3000 zone were going to be acting as effectively a channel. And the distance of a channel is this. So basically we've got a distance here of the channel. We take that distance and then that signals above this zone that 3400 resistance. So it certainly looks like the stock market is moving technically towards the 3400. The trend is super intact in terms of bullish momentum. The market is obviously a bit bubblicious right now in terms of its moves based on the economies. Really, it's all about tech, but tech are doing well. And we trigger past this point. It's really kind of saying, okay, well, we've stopped out a lot of people. There's been a lot of bears kind of all the way through this. And look what's happened before. Well, the weekly, we had that shooting star over here. It was broken past and it actually just went gap straight up. And then that created a huge amount of bullish flow. So you can see how when the market gets past these zones, of course, here it also was breaking moving averages, which is even more important, but it was breaking past and it did so in style. So if we see it again, pretty much will trigger this kind of event. And we want to drive down to the smaller time frames to see how we're going to possibly deal with that situation. Well, when we get on to the daily, things change a little bit. We're putting a lot of pressure on. On Friday, there was a huge sell-off kind of in the morning all the way down to the 32.17. And then there was a huge pickup from that point. And it ended as a pin bar. So it ended as that bullish hammer. And does that mean anything? Well, it just shows you that at the end of the day, going into potentially a risky weekend, the market was pretty bullish in terms of what the movements were. Now we're going to need to see it test this 32.80 and get past it. So what we might see on the daily is we might see it go up, close up higher, pull back down, test the 32.80, which will become where resistance becomes support. And then of course, do the lightning bolt on the smaller time frames and head higher on the trajectory of that channel pattern, which is pointing towards 3400 and the all time highs. So that's something that definitely could happen this week. Another thing that we could see is it comes up and tests these highs, maybe Monday or Tuesday, and then quickly rejects that zone. Now, if it rejects that zone, what's that show us about sentiment? Well, of course, it's going to come back down to the 3200, probably more likely around the 3220, 3230, where the 20 moving average is, which we've seen hold the markets before. And that zone will act as kind of dynamic support. The market will bounce or find buyers there and we'll kind of stay within a range. So it could be a week where we actually see a breakout of the range and a lot of bullish momentum, or it could be a week where we see it kind of come up, test this high, find resistance, and then start selling down. So the key levels still remain kind of that 32.30, 32.80 now, and then of course 34.00. They're all the zones that you want to be looking at from the bullish side. If you're looking at the bearish side, I guess you would be looking at 3280, but you'd need to dial it down to the smaller time frames, and you need to be looking at some kind of lightning bolt switch where we see a low, a lower high, and then of course the lower low, signaling the change of trend on the smaller time frames. You really always want to use price action whenever possible instead of indicators at this level. And that's just because so many indicators are going to be showing you divergence. So many indicators are going to be showing you potentially overbought signals. What will usually happen is the market will break through the zone, then come back down. And during that period when it's coming back down, it'll actually reset a lot of those overboughts into oversolds. And you'll be sitting here thinking, why was I selling it down here? when now it looks like a buy. So we'll get that kind of oversold here and then we could be looking at buying it up. So going against the trend is always difficult and it's why we always say key level breaks are going to be important. Below the 3200 for the bears will be important. There's definitely a key level there. 
And then of course, underneath the 3150 will be the next level, which we've seen act as resistance and as support. And if it gets under that zone, really it opens up all the way down to 3000. So from the bear side, we have plenty of opportunity if it gets under these zones, but where it sits right now, it's certainly looking relatively bullish. In fact, it's looking quite bullish if it gets past this 3280. So on the daily, that's our key levels for the S&P 500. If we dial it in on the four hour, it really tells us pretty much the same story. We've seen big bullish momentum off this 20 moving average on the four hour. I think that therefore means that it's a level or a indicator that we can use during this week to buy bounces off if we're on the smaller timeframes. Whenever we see this happen multiple times, so we have like one or two times that it finds dynamic support or resistance, after that event, generally the market will usually find it maybe three, four, or even five times. If you look at Apple charts, if you look at Amazon charts, if you look at charts like that, during the bullish run, they've been hugging these 20 exponential or 20 simple moving averages. And these have been acting as very good dynamic support in the uptrends. So big bullish move after that bearish move on Friday really doesn't signify much other than the market is still pretty keen on going up for now. So what about the NASDAQ? Well, on the monthly, we closed pretty strong at 10,900 after the earnings reports. You can see that the trend on the monthly has been very aggressive. It hasn't come back to the 20 exponential moving average in some time, but over time, it usually will do so. So at some point, it will have to retrace to the 20 exponential moving average. It cannot go parabolic forever. It's not the nature of markets at least technically or even fundamentally. It just can't continue to go at this pace. So we were seeing a bit of a topping event at that 11,000 key psychological. And now that we've got the earnings reports out of the way, we did see some bullish momentum, but that doesn't mean that we've closed above the key zone. So has it been strong enough? It hasn't yet. The market is not signaling here that we are strong enough just yet to move to the next level, but we've seen that consolidation. So last week we had the bearish signals. We were talking about how that 10,500 was a key zone. We needed to see a close underneath that zone. And then we'd see further selling pressure back down here to the previous highs, which would be the 20 exponential moving average as well. No coincidence that they would fit together. And at the same time, that would be approximately the distance from the peak of the market to of course the 10,500. Look how the market predicts these types of things. If that was to occur, it would become a very likely event. And that's why you're kind of playing chess with the market often when you're doing these types of analysis. You're trying to figure out what is the most likely statistical thing to happen. I'd like to just point out again, just like we're talking about on that S&P 500, shooting star broken above strong bullish move. So that shows again how these candles, while they're seen as bearish, don't necessarily act that way, especially when the market gets above those zones. So on the weekly here, we are seeing a trapped market. And when we dial it down into a one hour, it becomes even more apparent that we're trapped within a zone. There's going to be a lot of take profiting if it does reach this 11,000. People just take profit at the resistance. It's happened twice before. It becomes that self-fulfilling prophecy where often the market will find weakness here and profit taking levels. The longer this market remains in a range, the stronger it really becomes when it breaks out. So we could be seeing even a triple top here where we have one, two and three resistance points followed by further selling down. If it breaks past that, it will have really thought about this level. So that would be even more significant when the break, if it was to occur. For now, we're trading a range. So really, if it gets down to 10,500, you're looking for buying opportunities. And if it gets up to 11,000, you could be looking for selling opportunities. Though I always caution people, the trend has been incredibly up. If you're trying to sell the market, while you're going to sometimes get high kind of profitable trades where you might sell it up here at the 11,000, put your stop loss tight and sell it down, just remember you are going against trend. If it breaks past this channel this week, well, it's a channel-based strategy. Effectively, we're now seeing the market hit two sides. It's fully fledged in a channel, it's in a range. And that range dictates that if the market breaks, it breaks by this distance up as well. So one of the things that you could be doing is setting an alert above the 11,000 zone. If it breaks out as a trader, you could then be seeing it come back down, test the 11,000. 
it'll find support where previous resistance becomes support and then that lightning bolt up to the next move. And this would be signaling around 11,500 to 11,600. I know it sounds crazy, but that is really what this pattern would signify. So there's a lot to go through this week. There's obviously some opportunities on these markets. It really comes down to the way that you like to play it and the way you like to trade it. Another notable will be watching gold and silver this week. They obviously topped out a little bit last week. They're now in a very similar range in terms of they've tested the highs several times and we'll have to see what that does in terms of movements. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell, and we'll see you in another video tomorrow. Happy trading, everybody. Bye.